In this module, you will learn various types of matrices. A matrix is characterized by two factors. The nature of the elements and the order of the matrices. Let's see them now. First, we will start with the column matrix. The column matrix consists of only one column. An example of a column matrix is shown here. In a column matrix, each row will have only one element. The matrix shown here is of order 3 by 1. The general representation of a column matrix having M rows is as shown. A matrix is said to be a column matrix if it has only one column. Similarly, a row matrix will have only one row of elements. A row matrix is shown here. In a row matrix, each column will have only one element. The order of the matrix shown here is 1 by 3. The general representation of a row matrix having n columns is shown here. A matrix is said to be a row matrix if it has only one row. A matrix having equal number of rows and columns is called a square matrix. A matrix of order 3 by 3 is shown here. This matrix has three rows and three columns. General representation of a square matrix of order n by n is shown here. The matrix in which the number of rows is equal to the number of columns is said to be a square matrix. The diagonal from the first element of the first row to the last element of the last row of a square matrix is called the principal diagonal of a square matrix. For example, the principal diagonal in the matrix shown is the diagonal consisting of the elements 2, 4 and 1. In the matrix shown here, the number of rows is 2, whereas the number of columns is equal to 3. General representation of a rectangular matrix of order M by N is shown here. In this matrix, M is not equal to N. If the number of rows is not equal to the number of columns in a matrix, then the matrix is said to be a rectangular matrix. Shown here is an upper triangular matrix. If in a square matrix, if the elements below the main diagonal are zero, then the matrix is said to be an upper triangular matrix. Shown here is a lower triangular matrix. If in a square matrix, if the elements above the main diagonal are zero, then the matrix is said to be a lower triangular matrix. Consider a matrix where all the elements except the highlighted elements are zeros. These elements are called the diagonal elements of the matrix. These kind of matrices are called diagonal matrices. The general representation of a diagonal matrix is as shown here. Let's see how this general form is implied to the example shown. A square matrix is said to be a diagonal matrix if all its non-diagonal elements are zero. For a diagonal matrix, 
if all elements along the diagonal are equal to each other, then the matrix is called a scalar matrix. A scalar matrix can be represented as follows. Let's use the example matrix to understand the general form. This means that for i not equal to j, the element is 0. And for i equal to j, the element is a non-zero number k. A diagonal matrix is said to be a scalar matrix if its diagonal elements are equal. In a scalar matrix, if all the diagonal elements are equal to 1, then the matrix is said to be an identity matrix. Identity matrices of order 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 are shown here. Identity matrix is a special case of scalar matrix with the diagonal elements equal to 1. General representation of identity matrix is shown here. The general representation is used to explore the example as shown. The square matrix in which elements in the diagonal are all 1 and the rest are all 0 is called an identity matrix. Identity matrices of different orders are shown here. When every element of a matrix is 0, the matrix is called a zero matrix or null matrix. A matrix is said to be zero matrix or null matrix if all its elements are zero. Suppose we have a matrix. If we interchange the rows and columns of this matrix, we will get a new matrix. This is called the transpose operation. To understand this, let's find the transpose of matrix A as shown. Let the matrix that we obtain after transposing A be B. The first row of matrix A becomes the first column of the matrix B. Similarly, the second row of A becomes the second column of B. Now, the completed matrix is the transpose of A. The transpose of a matrix A is denoted as shown. An alternate representation of the matrix is written as A superscript T, where T denotes the transpose. If the order of the original matrix is M by N, then the transpose is of the order N by M. Transpose of a matrix is the matrix obtained by interchanging rows and columns. The transpose of the transpose of a matrix is equal to the matrix itself. We will verify this with the matrix X. Let's find the transpose of X. Next, we will take the transpose of the transpose of X. We observe that it is equal to X. Based upon the transpose operation of a matrix, we can observe some properties of matrices. Suppose we have a matrix as shown. Let's find the transpose of the matrix. We can observe that the transpose of the matrix is the same as the original matrix. We can say that X is a symmetric matrix. We can now define a symmetric matrix.
A square matrix is said to be a symmetric matrix. If the elements which are symmetric with respect to the principal diagonal are equal. Let's observe another property associated with the transpose of a matrix. Let's find the transpose of the matrix shown here. We can observe that the transpose is equal to the negative of the matrix. In this case, Y is called a skew symmetric matrix. A square matrix is said to be a skew symmetric matrix. If the elements which are symmetric with respect to the principal diagonal are equal but opposite in sign while the principal diagonal elements are zero. In this module, you will learn about the addition and subtraction operations performed on matrices. Arithmetic operations such as addition and subtraction are possible on matrices of the same order. However, the arithmetic operations are done on the elements of the matrices. Let's start by exploring the addition operation on two matrices. We have two matrices x and y of the same order. If we are performing the addition operation on x and y, it means that we are adding the elements of x to the corresponding elements of y. Let's see how it's done. The element in the first row and the first column of matrix x is added to the element in the first row and the first column of matrix y. Similarly, the other corresponding elements are added as shown. It has to be noted that matrix addition can be performed over matrices having the same order. An example of the addition operation over two matrices A and B is shown here. The sum operation is shown here. Every element of A is added to the corresponding element of B. The sum of the matrices A and B is as shown. Similar to the addition operation, the subtraction operation can be performed over two matrices. Shown here are two matrices X and Y which we used earlier. The subtraction of matrix Y from matrix X is denoted as shown. The resulting matrix is Z. The subtraction operation over matrices X and Y is shown here. The resultant matrix Z is of the form shown here. We will see an example of subtraction using matrices A and B that we saw before. The subtraction operation is shown here. Every element of B is subtracted from the corresponding element of A. The difference of the matrices A and B is as shown.
this module, you will learn about the multiplication operation over matrices. The multiplication of matrices is not similar to their addition or subtraction. In the addition and subtraction operations over matrices, we perform the operations element by element. In multiplication, however, we multiply the elements in a row of the first matrix by the elements in a column of the second matrix. Let's see the procedure. We have two matrices X and Y. Let the resulting matrix of the multiplication of these matrices be Z. We will first multiply the elements in the first row of X to the corresponding elements in the first column of Y. We will write the sum of the products of the elements as shown. Then, we multiply the elements in the first row X to the elements in the second column of Y. We will write the sum of the products of the elements as shown. In similar manner, we multiply the elements in the other rows and columns. Finally, we get the matrix as shown. Let's see an example with the matrices shown. First, we will take the first row of A and the first column of B and multiply the elements one by one as shown. Similarly, we multiply all the rows of A with all the columns of B. We get the resulting matrix as shown. Here, we have to note that the multiplication operation is possible only when the number of columns of the first matrix X is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix Y. If we have two matrices X and Y with orders M by P and P by N respectively. Then, the product of the two matrices is of the order M by N. The multiplication property over matrices satisfies the associative law and the distributive law. According to the associative law, if we have three matrices, X, Y and Z, then X multiplied by Y multiplied by Z is equal to X multiplied by Y multiplied by Z whenever both sides of the equality are defined. Let's see an example to verify the associative law using matrices A, B and C. First, we will find the left-hand side. Next, we will multiply this matrix with C.
we get the matrix as shown. Next, we will find the right hand side. First, we will calculate the product of matrices B and C. Next, we will multiply A with this matrix Both the matrices are equal. We can see that the multiplication satisfies the associative law. According to the distributive law, if X, Y and Z are three matrices, then X multiplied by Y plus Z is equal to X multiplied by Y plus X multiplied by Z. Also, x plus y multiplied by z is equal to x multiplied by z plus y multiplied by z whenever both sides of the equality are defined. Now, let's verify the distributive law for the multiplication of matrices with matrices A, B and C as shown. First, we will find the left hand side starting with A plus B. Next, we multiply this matrix with matrix C. Next, we find the right hand side starting with the product of A and C. Next, we will multiply B and C. Next, we will add both the matrices. Hence, the distributive law is applicable to the multiplication of matrices.